Welcome to RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. In this edition of RVTA, I'm going to be talking about uh, different types of travel trailers on the market, differentiating uh, different uh, qualities and abilities of travel trailers on the, on the market. This is for all you newbies out there, you know, your young folks out there, your older folks out there that are getting ready to buy your first travel trailer. It's very important to understand the differentiation in the marketplace, what's available and what you're going to get and certain qualities. Okay. So uh, first of all, we're going to talk about body types, different types of boxes that you're going to be living in in this uh, travel trailer. First up is uh, sticks and tin. That's essentially built like your house. Uh, a lot of houses. It's basically a woods superstructure. And then the uh, and maybe if you're lucky, if you're super lucky, they'll add some insulation. Then they'll put some uh, wrap around the uh, outside of the, you know, vapor barrier. And then they'll put some uh, siding on there. Vinyl, aluminum, or other material type of siding. So that's your entry level into RVing. A sticks and tin travel trailer. Upgrade from there and more contemporary in design. It used to be all uh, travel trailers were sticks and tin before the advent of a laminated travel trailer. Essentially called laminate because they laminate fiberglass, a sheet of fiberglass onto a piece of substrate. In the past it was Luan, a piece of wood, and but they had a lot of issues with that. It bubbled up, it absorbed moisture. Because it's wood, it sort of got fat and uh, and you'd see all these bubbles and what was called in the day, delamination. Not a good thing. But now they've replaced that with Asdell for a lot of manufacture. Not all, but a lot. They replaced it with Asdell plastic. And as you very well know, most plastics don't absorb moisture. So you have less chance of delamination. A good thing. So they laminate that and they uh, sandwich it in the old machine there and they uh, either vacuum bonded it or roller pinched it and when they create their RV. And of course they typically, most RVs, contemporary RVs, uh, travel trailers I'm talking about, have an aluminum structure. Some still have a wood structure that are uh, laminated, but most of them too, from what I understand, what I understand is uh, they have aluminum structure and they put what's called uh, inside a uh, foam block for insulation and on the inside another layer of uh, your you know your walls and stuff like that so you have sticks and tin laminated and the upgrade for a lot of individuals if you want something a little bit more durable a little bit more aerodynamic because uh, sticks and tin and uh, laminate are usually boxes they look like little shoe boxes going down the road uh, just they aren't very again aerodynamic and if it's not aerodynamic it's going to uh, cause you to spend a little bit more money for gasoline or diesel to go down the road do you want to do that so an upgrade from there is uh, what's called a fiberglass molded travel trailer they vary in prices tremendously from and they're usually either small or a little bit bigger, nothing too big. I haven't seen too many, you know, fiberglass molded travel trailers bigger than 26 feet. They're usually diminutive to a little bit, you know, medium size. So the benefit of this one is that they're molded and you get, they clamp these two parts together, the top and the bottom, and they put a little band around it. And uh, it's, again, very aerodynamic. And it's built like a little egg. It looks like a little egg going down the road. And uh, it's, not prone to delamination or other issues. No problems. No, so, uh, so you're not gonna have any, many, many, any, any sort of crazy issues uh, that's typically uh, due to sticks and tin construction or uh, laminated RV construction. So they're a bit better quality, okay? A little sturdier going down the road. They last a long time. And but they come in various price points. Some have a very simple construction, basically the shell, and they put this carpet inside, and it's it's pretty funny. I went to the Casita little uh, plant down the road here in Rice, Texas. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. I just drove down there. It's only an hour and a half away, and I viewed uh, a lot of their travel trailers and uh, had a tremendous time down there looking at the RVs down there, the travel trailers. Very high quality construction, very sturdy, very simple also, 
very simple in the design. Essentially, you got a shell, and for insulation, they uh, glue onto the walls this one inch or three quarters inch, it's not very thick, uh, material that glues onto it. It's basically a foam and then a little bit of carpet. I never thought you could put carpet on the walls. You learn something new every time. I only thought they were supposed to be on the floors, but on these uh, casitas and a lot of these, you know, lower priced uh, fiberglass molded trowel trailers, they're on the walls too. It serves as insulation and uh, paneling, et cetera, et cetera, for the RV. Again, that's a simple construction. There are some very nice upscale uh, fiberglass molded travel trailers by Bigfoot and all these other manufacturers in Canada. They're very popular in Canada. But uh, over there in Tennessee, uh, they make uh, what's called the Oliver Legacy Number no. 2. Again, that's the Oliver Legacy Number no. 2. If you want something that you can buy and it's going to last, uh, you know, <laughs> for generations, it's a generational <laughs> uh, travel trailer. These are the ones. They use a lot of uh, the technology from the boating industry. They make a very thick fiberglass shell. And they also, the interior is a fiberglass shell too. So they sandwich these two things together. They have an insulation in the middle. So fiberglass, insulation, fiberglass. Very nice, very nice. You, get, you can have the interior in different types of colors of fiberglass for the counters. They have like a granite color, they have a cream color, etc., etc. If you want a super high quality, not very big. Again, if you like big, uh, a lot of these fiberglass molded travel trailers are not going to be for you. Sad but true, it's not going to be for you. Because they're, again, under usually 26 feet. Most of them are on 20 feet, 22 feet. Some are even 16 feet. They're very small, again, diminutive. And same goes for the folks at Oliver Legacy. The manufacturers down there, they're very fine. I wish I had an Oliver Legacy. I'd be very happy for the rest of my life in an Oliver Legacy. Of course, once you get the price, uh, you say, hey, it's uh, $60,000. Oh, I want that too, I want that, 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 I want that. Oh, it's $75,000, almost $80,000 now. Who knows what the price is going to be in 2023. It's going to be expensive, and you have to wait. You order one, and you say, okay, when do I get it? Uh, a year and a half from now, maybe a year from now, if you're lucky. <laughs> Same goes for the folks in Rice, Texas at uh, Casita. Uh, they go, you know, you order one, uh, when can I get it? Oh, it's going to be about a year, maybe a year and a half. <laughs> it takes a while. It's not like going to your RV dealership and saying, I would like to buy that Rockwood. I would like to buy that, uh, you know, Keystone product. I would like to buy that Winnebago. Uh, oh, we can deliver it to you right now. You can take it off the lot right now. We just have to do a little prep, clean it up, and you can take it off the lot right now. That's not the case. That's not the case for those fiberglass molded travel trailers. Airstream is also similar to those fiberglass molded. Uh, they're very aer aerodynamic and of course incredibly costly. Uh, you thought those uh, Oliver Legacies uh, were very expensive. <laughs> Just wait to uh, check out an Airstream, a hundred grand and plus, a lot of them. Uh, it's not unusual to pay a hundred twenty-five, hundred fifty for an Airstream travel trailer, but they're nice. They're very nice. Again, the only issue I have, let me just uh, explain to you my only issue with Airstream. I love the interiors. I love the construction. I love the design. It's absolutely glorious going down that road, uh, that silver little, you know, uh, Airstream travel trailer. And they have different uh, qualities of Airstream. So the thing I don't like is that it can be easily scratched. That aluminum skin can be easily, readily, inexorably, uh, maybe not inexorably scratch. So if you get a, if you're, when I back into a spot at the old uh, state park, uh, sometimes there's, I didn't, I sometimes don't see things like a little, little tiny little twig, little tiny twig, not a little branch, not a something gigantic, just a tiny little twig, and it scratches the side of me, the my RV, and I have to clean it up, I have to rub on it, and uh, sort of goes away. It's still there, but it's still, so uh, it doesn't always just. Uh, I don't ameliorate the situation by just, you know, buffing it a little bit, but sometimes it just stays there. But I can deal with that. You know, it's not a big, but just imagine you just spent 100, 
25, 100, 50 thousand dollars on the airstream, and you got that little scratch on your <laughs> outside of your RV. And you went, uh, there it is. There's that little scratch on my beauty that I spent a ton on. I can't buff that out. <sighs> I have to go take it to the dealership, and they're going to charge me what an arm and a leg to fix it. That's the harsh reality of airstream ownership. You got to make sure to be very careful. You got to. It's it's a it's a delicate little creature. The second thing I want you to look at when you buy an RV is the suspension. The suspension, and there's different qualities and uh, features that are offered by suspension. The first type of suspension is a uh, leaf spring. That's been around since stagecoach days. Uh, if you've seen movies with stagecoach, they actually use leaf springs. In a lot of uh, RVs, about 80% of the market, I estimate, use uh, leaf springs. They're pretty simple and easy to maintain. Some of the upgrades would be in the uh, where the two leaf springs, if there's two axles, uh, get together and there's maybe a, a different type of uh, device uh, manufactured from different manufacturers that sort of upgrade and isolate the two axles to a certain extent, okay? Very durable, very high quality design, very simple design, okay? An upgrade from there used by Airstream and Rockwood and some other manufacturers is the torsion axle. Basically, they isolate the, uh, they have a rubber uh, internals for the uh, axle and sort of creates this uh, torsion effect when you uh, twist it. So on each wheel, they have a little lever. The right one goes up, the left one can go down. They can just go down the road independently, okay? And you get them on both axles or one axle. Again, they're used by Airstream, Rockwood, Flagstaff, and other manufacturers out there. You know, Ember, etc. For their new touring line, they're using that style of axle. It's a very nice axle. It's supposed to be a little bit better than a leaf spring. It's supposed to allow you to make those turns more easily and it's more it's more like independent suspension. It's not rudimentary suspension. It's an upgrade uh, from leaf springs. If you want to go off-road, you only have a couple options. You have to upgrade to a high quality like this Kurt. It has this off-road suspension. Essentially your RVs right here and you have this lever down here and it goes up and down. It's very popular in Australia. I've seen uh, for the last dozen years or so in Australia they've had this system and design and now it's been, uh, you know, um, in the, it's now coming to the United States of America. And certain brands uh, like the Black Series use this kind of suspension. So it doesn't do you any good. Uh, here's a point of interest for a lot of you out there. Harsh reality. It doesn't do you good to have off-road suspension if your travel trailer isn't off-road cable, isn't sturdy. It's like, you know, it's a, something flimsy. If it's going to be bouncing down the road, is going to break, okay? Something sturdily built, super well built, like, some, like the Black Series, uh, is uh, is going to handle the bumps and you know going down the road and hitting up an occasional boulder etc. It's not going to have any issues. Again, the box has to match the suspension for off-road RV. Okay, so that's a very simple idea and concept. Uh, a lot of manufacturers out there say they are off-road and uh, not really. They're not really off-road. They may have. A, you know, torsion suspension in a modest, you know, box, but it's not going to be off-road ready. It may be off-grid ready, going down a little bit of a bumpy road for a little section of time, or down a dirt road. It might be off-grid capable, but off-road, uh, no way, Jose. So this has been my little uh, spiel on uh, different types of RVs, especially specifically the the design of the box and the suspension and when you go shopping you should look at the suspension and go and if that RV salesman says yeah you want to go off-road this uh this suspension will work for you and this box will work for you and you're gonna go uh no this looks more like uh, going to the national parks maybe going to state parks going to private parks I cannot go down that rutted road for any extended period of time 
This past summer, I was offered a job to work near Chaco Canyon, but I had uh, the. I learned very quickly that if you're going to go down that road to Chaco Canyon, it is one of the worst roads ever. It is managed by the the local Indian nation, and they haven't. De they decided hey, we're not going to fix that road. We're just going to leave it the way it is, uh, unless you go some cash. We'll, we'll maybe fix it then, but right now we're, we don't care. So that road going to that national park was very disappointing. I read stories of people just having their whole RV trash, their suspension and parts of their interior falling off, you know, doors, you know, things flying, flaying about. And But they said they were very happy to go to that uh, campground. They said it was a very beautiful campground. But I am not willing to lose hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of value with my RV and having to replace parts of the suspension fix things in the interior to go down that rutted washboard road. Maybe you would. Again, if I had one of those uh, Black Series uh, travel trailers and a nice four-wheel truck, a high-quality four-wheel truck with good height, with very significant uh, suspension that's raised off the ground, I would go down that road, no problem. But with my uh, modest Chevy Colorado and my Rockwood Mini Light, uh, as I like to say, and I said previously in this video, no way whole same. Hope you like this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them below. Be professional. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Muchas gracias a todos a ustedes. And of course, if you would please like, subscribe, and share, I would greatly appreciate it. Gracias. Muchas gracias. From Fort Worth, Texas, this has been Asus Manuel Menegarza talking about uh, the things I've learned over the last few decades about RVing and sharing them with all you newbies. All you old folks out there probably already know this stuff. But for all you newbies out there who know, uh, who want to buy a new travel trailer, understand what your limitations are. If you just want to go to a state park, if you want to go to a national park, and it's not, and you're going down the highway, maybe a little short section of dirt road that's pretty much level, you can buy just about any travel trailer uh, on the market. But if you want to do some serious off-roading, you have to be very, very, <laughs> very specific and make sure the box and the suspension can handle uh, the rigors of going down that horrible, absolutely horrible, disastrous, uh, terrible road, okay? From Fort Worth, Texas, this has been Jesus Manuel Menagarza. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.